Welcome to today's module on state and federal policy fellowships for policy and advocacy. This is our second career focused module on science and technology policy fellowships. Um, in our last class, we heard a lot about the AAAS fellowships specifically, uh, definitely one of the more well known uh, fellowships, but there are many more out there. And uh, tonight you're going to hear about a few more of these uh, fellowships and where you can find out more about them. We also have Chanel, who is a former California Council on Science and Technology fellow. And she also is a former uh, JSPG editorial board member. So a lot of JSPG um, connections here on this panel. And then she currently uh, serves as a policy consultant at the California State Assembly. So next we'll go ahead and go to Chanel and she can kind of walk through some of her experiences as well. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me again. Let me go ahead and share screen. We'll get started. Okay. Okay, can you guys see? Looks great. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So I'll talk to you today about my time in the CCST uh, fellowship program. Uh, so what this program does is every year it takes 10, although I think now the class size has increased to 15, it takes a handful of scientists and puts them in the state legislature. So the idea is to embed scientists and engineers as legislative staffers uh, inside state government where you're working alongside other uh, you know, full-time staffers and you're, and you're touching policy. So in order to go from a scientist to a staffer, there's sort of a transformation process that takes place. Uh, here I'm showing you on the left what the legislative hearing room looks like from the dais. So I'm actually taking this photo from where I sit with some of the other uh, consultants, and that's sort of the first level. And then one level above me is the dais of senators. The microphones ahead of you are where people will come to present on a bill that's up for consideration, uh, you know, speaking for, speaking against, uh, expert testimony from, uh, let's say, a, an executive office that might be administering that bill were it to pass. And then way in the back, you see sort of all of these uh, um, members of the public. And I think this ended up being a bill related to like mandatory vaccinations for children attending a public school. So that the room was absolutely packed. Uh, and then here on the right, I'm showing you a picture of the actual California Senate floor. Uh, it's, it's all themed red. If you're in the assembly, it's all themed green. So it's kind of cool. I just wanted to give you guys a sense of sort of the visuals of what this experience was like for me when I sort of think of the slideshow in my mind of some very seminal experiences. This is what popped up. Uh, but here during training, they actually had us sitting at the senator's desk and we were getting a presentation from the chief parliamentarian of the Senate. So that's the person who uh, is the expert on all of the rules and motions and proceedings of the uh, activity on the Senate floor. And so uh, that's someone that we got to know. Any case, so uh, they don't just sort of throw you, you know, in the maw and say, okay, you know, go for it. Uh, there's a pretty intensive month long uh, training process on, okay, like what is California policy and politics? CCSC does a really good job of this. And so it's like nine to five every day for a month. It's just you know, information out of a fire hose, but you're doing it with your cohort. So it's a lot of fun, even if it is a bit exhausting. So here, oh, do I have a pointer? Let's see, okay. So here uh, they taught us about the legislative calendar. Uh, and so in the California state legislature, we absolutely live and die by these constitutionally, state constitution, mandated deadlines. And so you really have to know what those are because everything else that you do is back scheduled according to that. This is a really important element of the fellowship is knowing your deadlines and getting all of your work in on time. And so uh, after we learned the calendar, they cut it up into little bits and then without notes made, it, made us put it back together again to see if you had really gotten it. Here we had a professor from, I think, UC San Diego, uh, who's a, a, a political philosophy professor, come talk to us about the history of California politics, how it's been shaped by various uh, really important figures, which governors, you know, really had a big impact, uh, the history of immigration and how it affects the state, the history of uh, water politics in the state, just, just to sort of give you a sense of um, how, how and why certain policy conversations might be very intense or contentious. And, yeah, and also what's nice about this time is that you really bond 
as a cohort. You spend a lot of time in this room with your notes and with the Constitution open, learning how to read bills, learning who's who in California politics, just to kind of get your bearings, right? And, okay, so we, as scientists, we like to think of ourselves as very objective, you know, nonpartisan, data-driven, but you are working in a political environment. So it is important to appreciate that in California, right, that generally you're serving a member who works for a party. California right now, the majority party are the Democrats. They enjoy a super majority. So they have over two thirds representation. So here in the Senate, I'm showing you a picture of the head of the Senate, uh, Tony Atkins. She actually has the distinction of being the first openly queer women uh, Senate pro tempore. That's one thing I really like about California is there is no shortage of really amazing, powerful female leaders everywhere. Uh, here I'm showing you sort of, um, if you were looking at the Senate floor from above where everyone sits, just to give you sort of a visual of, of the breakdown. And then here you're seeing a breakdown of party lines geographically. And as you will notice, there's a coastal sort of inland split. Um, and then certainly uh, down here where you have big cities like LA and San Diego, those are also tend to be very democratic. It's a similar breakdown in the assembly that they just have twice as, as, as many members, still a supermajority. Here's the head of the assembly, Mr. Anthony Rendon. Uh, here's California broken down. You'll notice the same coastal inland shift. Here they broke out uh, the Bay and they broke out, I think the LA area, just because these districts are so small, um, they wouldn't fit. I point this out just to say that local politics are real. And so there's a Northern California v. Southern California, beef or tension, if you will. There's definitely a coastal versus inland tension, if you will. So when a policy comes to you, I look at who the author of that bill is and I pull up this map and I say, what party do they work for? Where's their district? Oh, they're Northern California, they're inland. Oh, they're Southern California, they're coastal, whatever. And that, all, that by itself would tell you a lot about their values and their priorities and how they might approach the bill differently. So it's really important to know just some basics about the political, the political geography of this big and, and really diverse state. So one of the things that I loved about this fellowship was that, you know, you're not like a secretary, you have the opportunity to impact major legislation. So SB 206 by um, Senator Nancy Skinner was a bill I worked on uh, as a fellow that ended up having a really big national impact. So under old laws, if you were a college athlete in the NCAA, right, uh, you were dis uh, disallowed from earning any income by virtue of your athletic ability, right? So that means that you couldn't teach a sports camp, you couldn't tutor in swimming, you know, you couldn't have like a hot dog stand and try to raise money for a uniform because they were considered, you know, part of the amateur class. Uh, and so it, it just, just wasn't allowed. Um, Senator Skinner came along and thought that this was inequitable to basically cut these students out of being able to, uh, gain capital by virtue of their skills and experience. And so she made a bill to say, uh, this isn't fair. Oh my goodness. You would think that we were, you know, just the, the world, the sky was falling at all of these lobbyists from the UC, University of California system, the California State University system, all the private universities talking about how we were just totally gonna destroy you know, college sports in the state if, 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 if we did this. And so there are all these headlines, you know, happening. And, and here I am just a staffer analyzing this bill. Of course, one nice thing they tell you in training is that don't worry, you can't break California. Every bill goes through this labyrinthine sort of maze of committees of which mine was only one. Uh, and so even if you don't get it perfectly right, that, that's kind of the point. There's a lot of redundancies in the process. But what makes me very proud is that it stopped in our committee when I was working in Senate education. Uh, it was very, very difficult to, to write this analysis, not knowing anything about college sports or about the, you know, California system. Uh, but I learned very quickly, and there are a lot of great resources in the legislature to help you. But uh, what's really cool is that Gavin Newsom ended up signing this bill, and many sort of influential leaders tweeted about it, including the governor himself and Bernie Sanders. So anyway, you know, you're not necessarily playing small ball. You know, as California goes, they say eventually so does the nation. So this is one example of landmark legislation that was really influential. Another thing that I really like about this gig is that, you know, prior to this role, you know, I was an advocate, rah, rah, go to the Capitol, you know, fund biomedical research, take my one pager and leave behind. But when you're a staffer, you're on the other side of that. 
right? People are coming to you, you know, you're getting lobbied. So every day at the Capitol, there's a new group, there's a new initiative, you know, uh, clamoring for the voices to be heard. And so this is obviously pre-COVID, uh, but every day, uh, this was the one about reproductive justice, certainly around the times of the, um, killings of you know George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and others. They were all sorts of Black Lives Matters protests. So the, 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 the energy in the city when you're walking past, you know, these um, lines of demonstrators just makes me feel like, wow, you're really in the center of the action. It's also nice to take the opportunity to talk to folks, uh, especially folks I disagree with, because you always just end up getting a really interesting perspective. People drive for miles and miles to get a chance to talk to a member, a member that I have the privilege of working with every day. So just being in the middle of all of that energy is really cool. Uh, CCST is well connected. This is a CCST alumni, uh, Dr. Julianne McCall, who I have immense respect for. Uh, she now is a science officer in the office of the governor working on leading their precision medicine division, you know, rock star. Uh, we meet with the secretary of the Air Resources Board. This is the chief parliamentarian of the Senate. I believe she is the first woman and she also happens to be Latina, you know, in this role, got to shake hands with her. You meet the Lieutenant Governor. Here is the president of the um, University of California system coming to give us a, a short round table. And this is just a small sort of subset of some of the, the big leaders and thinkers that CCSP will introduce you to that tell you about their career path, how they got there, you know, what personally motivated them, you know, to public service. It's all incredibly, inspiring, I feel. And then finally, relationship building just amongst colleagues. So here I have a picture. So one thing I really liked about the lab was that it was so communal and so relationship oriented. My lab was like a family. I felt that CCST sort of uh, emulated that as well. So we have a bike club, we have a book club, we have a, um, what's it called when you uh, dress up and you uh, have like role playing, murder mystery, murder mystery club. Um, this was the, my, where's my pointer? I lost it. Oh, here. This was my, uh, the office that I, that I staffed with and they sort of threw a little party for me when I graduated. Uh, my boss is right here. She was critical in introducing me to my next boss who is right here. So one thing about uh, this environment is that it's like high school, right? So you apply for a job, the minute that you click send on your resume and cover letter, even before you click send, they are gonna pick up the phone and call the last person you worked for and say, hey, you know, what's the city on Chanel, right? And so long before any paperwork with your name on it gets to them, they are calling each other up to get the gossip on you. And so um, I leveraged those connections so that the gossip would be good. Uh, to get me into my current position where I work with the Assembly Transportation Committee. These are my colleagues. She is also a science fellow. One thing CCST does really well is that they're just like spreading us like weeds, you know, all over the legislature. So every office at some point in time has had a science fellow or two. They enjoy a very strong reputation in the Capitol. If they, if they know you're a science fellow, it's like, oh, they're smart, they're hardworking, you know, they ask good questions, um, you know, they're going to be a great asset. So that's just sort of a, a brief overview. Um, but you can also find me over at the National Science Policy Network, where I am now their mentorship and professional development coordinator. And that's what I do, is talk about how do you land that perfect job for you. And so feel free to reach out to me there. I'm also active on Twitter and LinkedIn. And when you guys get the slides from the um, coordinators at the end, CCST uh, alumni board put together a beautiful PDF guide to science policy careers, not specific to CCST, but sort of more general. And then here's yet another list, this time a Google Doc of uh, science and technology policy fellowships for both citizens and non-citizens. So you can sort of see what else is out there. So I'll, I'll stop there and thank you guys for, for listening. <laughs>